potential students who are considering embarking on their educational journey at Victoria University. Joining us to speak about the roadshow is Assistant Vice Chancellor Pacifica Lua Manuvao de Mwini Laban. And with that, we say talo for lava, Lua Manuvao, and welcome to the yeah. show. Lisa Bolivanaka, Talopa Lava, Milo Lele, Kamna Mari, Warm Pacific Greetings. Vinaka Vakalevo. Loman Val, can you elaborate on the purpose of this roadshow? What are you hoping to achieve and who's this roadshow aimed at? Yes, well, I think, you know, many institutions and educational institutions sit in a vacuum. They sort of sit in their building in, in cities. And we realised that it was important to go direct to community to demystify the institution and university and go direct to our communities. And so we're partnering with the mayors and the city councils of the, the, the cities of the Wellington region because we wanted to try just to try this area first. And we're taking a team and we've sent flyers and uh, we've got a programme uh, where we just basically will go and invite specific communities that live in those areas, including the alumni, to come and talk about university. But I'm also more interested not only in promoting university as a pathway, but I'm more interested in what they think about university. Have they ever seen it as an option? You know, and to hear their views. Right. And who else from the university will be present at these uh, evening events? Yeah, so we've got a Pacific working team uh, that's sort of led by my office, and that has academics on it, um, people who lecture and teach, and also the, the support services, you know, scholarships, um, pastoral care, the Pacific Student Success Team. And um, we are basically wanting to, you know how there's so much information and people get inundated with it, we want to more look at the Pacific way of people to people, face to face, and um, so that people can talk openly and feel safe to ask all sorts of questions. Mm. Now, now, I understand the Electoral Commission has asked to be present. What will their role be? Yeah, as you know, you know, if you think about our world and you think about democracy, many people die to have a vote, and it's very, very important that our people are enrolled uh, to vote. Uh, but more importantly, to, to vote and vote intelligently because uh, the Electoral Commission has shared with us that, that the numbers of people, Pacific people in our region, and I'm sure it would be the same in Wilton, is still low. So it made a lot of sense with us going direct to Pacific communities in these areas to, for them to come along with us and enrol. Is there a high pass rate for Pacifica students who attend Victoria University? What's the experience generally for Pacifica students at Victoria? Right, so Pacific students, I mean, I've been here, I left Parliament in 2010, and it's now 2023, and you can see that the graduation rates have gone up in terms of graduates. But like any Pacific people, we're aspirational, we want to do better. We want to push them to go for higher like postgraduate as well and, and and masters and PhDs because you know we'd love to encourage them to also aim for jobs at university but also for decision making roles. That's why university is important to have that piece of paper. Hmm. Many universities are experiencing problems having to cut courses and sack staff. Is Victoria University growing through similar issues and is it impacting on Pacific students? Yeah, well, they're going through financial sustainability and our Vice-Chancellor Nick Smith has raised the issue about universities should work more collaboratively together because nearly every university in New Zealand has a business school. So if they were savvy and financially savvy, they would start to talk to each other how better they can share resources. Um, but no, it's not impacting on the Pacific um, students. We haven't lost any Pacific staff in terms of sustainability and restructure. And um, we're just remaining focused. There's still changes going on in relation to course offerings, but we're just going to go with the flow until we're here when the final decisions are made in September. Mm. All the best with the roadshow, Lua Manuval. But because you're a pioneer, the first Pacific Island woman member of parliament, we can't let you go without asking you about the upcoming general election. Do you miss the cut and thrust of electioneering? Have you thought about... Well, <laughs> 
I'll let you finish your question, sorry. All right. And also, have you thought about re-entering politics at all? And what are your thoughts about how the various campaigns are going, given we're only yeah. two months out? Well, I think cut and thrust is part of our normal diet as Pacific Islanders, no matter where we work, in media, with sport, university, or wherever. Um, but no, I've had my time. You can see my hair is white. It is time for your generation to step up. And I see my role as very much mentoring, supporting, guiding. I mean, when I first got into Parliament in 1999, I was the only Pacific woman. We've got a Deputy Prime Minister as a Pacific woman, and I think there's seven or eight now. And I just, for me, that's what makes me happy. Yeah. Lord Manuvao, Dame Winnie Laban, all the very best with the roadshow. We thank you for your time this morning. Always a pleasure having you on the show. We love hearing from you. And we're also celebrating 30 years of Pacific Radio today. Lua Manuvao, would you believe? Happy birthday. And thank I mean, you. you know, once upon a time, there was no voice for our people on media. And uh, it can only grow and develop further. Thank you for all the wonderful work you people do on bringing our people's voice to the public domain.